Hello, all you beautiful people. How is everyone doing on this beautiful day? I hope you guys are all doing uh, fantastic. Um, we are going to be uh, continuing some trails third. Um, we are actually on part 10, so that's uh, that's like already a, a monument in and of itself. Uh, is monument the correct word? I'm sure I'll give it. I'll, I'll say it is. But yeah, we're going to be playing some trail third. We left off finishing literally at the very end of chapter 5. Like, um, I remember we did the whole, we got all the party members, we got Estelle, we got everyone. And all we had to do was just get to the, the end and proceed the story. So, that's what we're going to do. Let me, uh, I also got to check to see if there's any doors that we have, that we got to do. I know we did a lot of it last stream, so it should, we should be fine. But just to be on the safe side. Oh, yeah, we got Renee. That's right. I believe she wasn't that great. Oh, no, we didn't test her. It was Richard who I didn't think was that great. That's right. Um, but anyways, let's go check out some of these doors. We did all of these. All we're missing is five. So, when it comes to the star doors... Oh, actually, let's check the sun doors because I'm right here on the page. Doo -doo. Oh, yeah. We got to do that one. That one's a mini game. It should be easy. And, uh, on door one, we did that one. So it's the star doors. Star door one, we did. Star door three we did. Star door four as well. Star door five we did. Point, uh, six we cannot do because we need the recipes. And for seven... Uh... Oh, we did that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. We got Ingenuity 2 and everything. And we had to fight the guys that petrified us. Okay. That was the last one we did, I remember. I did say I wanted to test out Renee. Renee only has two things, so she's gonna have to be she's gonna have to do a lot to make me think that she's actually you know useful on the team. So let's go into one quick and easy fight and let's just go and see um exactly if she's uh has anything going for her. Also, let me test the audio. I almost forgot. Hold on. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. Anyways. Let's go into a fight. Preemptive. 3k. Okay, Renee. So, you have a line AoE that has a 10% chance to KO them. Uh-huh. And a medium range AoE that has a chance to KO them. Okay. AoE stuff. Combination attack. Oh yeah. Um, medium range AoE with a 50% chance to instant kill. I do like that. 50% chance instant kill. And there's a chance to instant kill on melee. Did she just say I am I am the Terminator? Is that what she said? The voices are so low. I really should uh, turn them up. I always forget though because you can't turn them up here. You have to turn them up before you start your game. Uh, but Renee, um, I I like you as a character a lot, and I would definitely love to use you. But your kit, there's some characters here that are just really, really strong. I, I, she might learn some new stuff down the line. But I, I like this. I want to keep on with what I've been doing. Uh, that's not how you change party members. It's in here. Let's move out. Joshua. That's who we had, right? Yeah, we did. We're just missing... Uh, we're just missing Kevin to replace Estelle. So what does Renee give us as a support member? 
Renee gives us item drop rate. Oh, wait, that's just that. XP gain 15, that's good. Sephif gain 20, that's good. Defense negative 5. Huh. In this instance, I'm gonna stick with Olivier. So, what I'm gonna do is, whenever I'm just traversing the dungeons like normal, I'm gonna have Renee on. But when I'm um, out and about and I'm about to fight like a boss, like we're gonna first do the door. But the doors, you don't really have, you don't really do any fighting or anything like that. Um, especially since it's a mini game door. Um, we're just gonna go through that door and then when we come out, there's gonna be a boss. So there's not really much of a reason to put this on right now. I may as well just leave it on so I don't forget, you know? Which one was it? This one. Should allow me in. To choose left or to choose uh, to choose left or to choose right. Only the cards know what the future holds. If you wish to step inside, present the card that governs fate. And that's what we got in the chest earlier, a red chest. That it was the destiny card, I think it was. So if you didn't fully explore that area there, that that dungeon that the door is in. You would actually miss this. I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. So this is, like I said, um, this is a mini game door. So there's gonna be some cutscenes, and then we're gonna do a mini game. These are the these are short ones. The Calvert Republic. There's a city in this country, a place where migrants from the east have rec recreated their homeland from down to the bright lacquered tiles, nicknamed the Eastern Quarter. It was home to people of all kinds from all places. On the northern outskirts of that town was a little run-down bar. Doubtless, it had been presentable once, but now the plaster was crumbling and what, and what doors were left barely fit their pitted frames. Of course, such a seedy place attracted the clientele. Okay, I've never seen it written like that. The match. Inside, there were two gamblers of exceptional skill. It was only mere months ago when they had turned the underworld on its head on the match of the century. The first match was, uh, the first was Jack, a prolific blue-eyed gambler known by the moniker Victory Jack, who was able to finally put his past behind him. And the second was Halley, a petite gambler who remained doggedly by his side, despite his best attempts to shake her. Today was yet another ordinary day at the bar. However, the shriek of the door opening unannounced the arrival of someone who was anything but... Huh? Who the hell are you? It's gotta be either really dumb or really brave, and that's saying something with this joint. I'm putting my money on the former. How about you? <laughs> hey, get away from him, guys. Okay. <sighs> I'm so sorry about them. I'm sure that I'm sure that wasn't the welcome you were expecting when you stepped in here. I'm just so I got so caught off guard to see a character portrait. I was like, oh, it's just gonna be like text speeches. Or text bubbles, I mean. <laughs> They're not bad people, really, I swear. Although, you could certainly be forgiven for thinking so looking at them. Are you a customer by chance? Here, let me show you to a table. Heh. <laughs> Still, you're quite the unusual one, if you don't mind me saying so. Not many people would willingly come to a rundown bar like this, especially not in the middle of the day. I'm not saying it was a bad idea to come here, of course. Sure, it's in a desperate need of renovations and the regulars are a rowdy bunch, but there's just something, I don't know, warm about this place. Like I'm home. Phew, the food's a lot better than you think, too. Oh, watch your feet. I'm pretty sure that floor panel has there, uh, right there is going to snap any day now. Well, here's your seat. Anything you'd like to order? You don't look like you're here for booze anyway, so how about something to eat? Personally, I'd recommend the Tom Young Goon. It's the most popular thing on our menu, and for good reason. That mix of spicy with just the right amount of sourness is perfect. Aha! I can see your mouth watering already. That's a definite yes. Oh, something to drink. Just water? Sorry, what was that? You're looking for Jack? Well, he's usually sleeping in the back at this time of the day. Wait, did you come here to challenge him to a game or something? 
sorry. I didn't even think to ask if that was what you were here for. Hmm. Well, alright. I'll go and talk to him. If he's in a good mood, he might be willing. Don't get your hope up. hopes up, though. Wait here for a minute, okay? Hey, you hear that? That guy over there wants to take on Jack. Yeah, I heard. Haha, <laughs> if he takes him up on it, this could get real interesting. Heh, <laughs> wouldn't be so sure about that. It ain't often Jack actually gets really serious, and I don't know if that guy's got what it takes to bring him out of him, to bring it out of him. Well, here's the Tom Young Gung you ordered. Eat it while it's still hot. Oh, and as for Jack, sorry, but he says he'll pass this time. Seems like he's still hungover from drinking yesterday. Doesn't even want to get up. I'm sure that's not what you want to hear after coming out this way to challenge him, but that's Jack for you. Wait, no, I've got a great idea. How about you and I have a game first? If you beat me, I'll go bug him again. I'm sure he'd be totally interested in someone who's better than me. Surprise! I'm actually quite the gambler, you know. The name's Hallie. I'm the daughter of the legendary gambler, King. Not exactly a household name, but it's a pretty famous one in these kinds of circles. Fair warning, I don't plan on holding back one bit. If we're doing this, we're going all out. Plus, if I win, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Are you good with that? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Well, let's move to a more suitable table, shall we? As for the game, how does Blackjack sound? Yes, I'm actually pretty good at that one. I mean, it's RNG, but I, pr I, like, I like Blackjack. Look at this cover art. All the cover art for all these uh, minigames are actually really cool. Let's see if there's anything different with the uh, Blackjack of this game. You'll we'll play a series of Blackjack games against Halley, one-on-one. -on -one. Maximum of seven games will take place. The first player to win four games is the victor. Okay. First to four. Following commands can be used. Uh, take an issue. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take no additional cards. Take on your opponent using the ones you already have. So yeah, this, this is uh, blackjack. Is just basically 21. Um, you're gonna be keep at. You're gonna ask for. Uh, you're gonna get two cards. You're gonna get a number off them. So like, if you get like a, a one and a five, that's a total of six. And you want to get as close as to the close uh, to 21 that you can, but you don't want to go over it. If you go over, you bust, which means that you uh, pretty much lost the game. Um, your opponent can also do the same things you're doing, so they can hit. Um, they can hit you so that they can give you another card, and you can keep doing it until you decide to stop. Um, so, like for example, if you keep hit, uh, keep getting cards, and you like you have like 19 as an example. You can just stop right there, instead of risking it, you know? Having 7 cards and a combined total of score of 21 or less results in a 7 cards hand, which is even stronger than a blackjack. 2 cards with a total of 21 between them. I'd never heard of that roll before. The 7 card hand. But, uh, it's fine. That, that seems pretty rare, because I've never gotten 7 cards, like, in my entire lifetime that I've ever played this in games. Hehe, <laughs> are you ready? Then let's get started. Do you know one of their number? Okay. That's a 12. Hit me. That's a 16. Ah. Uh, this is like risky. I'm almost definitely gonna go over. Looking at the pile of cards that we have, she has a 6. I have a 9, 3, and a 4. Nor a smart player would hit. So, sure. Ooh! I'm gonna stand. Sure, we'll stand. I'll, uh, I'll... I'm gonna hope that she goes over, but 17's... N it's okay number, but it's not that great. You sure you're done? You look awfully confident. Ooh, she went over, you see? If you would have gotten a 10, I mean, if I would have if I would have hit uh, hit, I would have actually gotten a 10, and and I would have went over and lost. Ouch! I totally lost that one. <sighs> I must have gotten a little ahead of myself. I won't lose next time. Queen, okay. Hit me again. Hit me again. Oh yeah, perfect. You sure you're done? You look off. She's gonna see this every time. Yep, 
she uh, she it was she chose to uh, stay there. She couldn't beat me. So we're already up two. Oh, we're gonna stay here. Not even gonna draw. I win that one. Are right, we gonna win? Are we gonna win the whole four to zero right here? I probably just jinxed it, but let her. Let's see. I'm gonna. You know what? Let's stand. Haha! <laughs> it worked out. And that's four to zero. <sighs> I must have gotten a little ahead of myself. Well, that's that. Nice playing, stranger. You were incredible. Thank you. You have learned the recipe for Tom Young Gung and received 5,000 Mira. Wow, who would have thought? You're actually really good. All right, a deal is a deal. I'll go and talk to Jack again. Wow, he actually managed to beat her? Looks that way. Maybe we'll get to see something interesting after all. Man, I'm tired. Huh? There's a new face. So what? That's the guy who beat Hallie? Yeah, my head's throbbing like a bitch. <laughs> what? Did he? Uh, yep. Yeah, he passed out. <sighs> there goes the floor. Ha ha ha. See? Told ya. I knew he'd be the one to break it. Ah, that you did. Poor guy. It's kind of crazy how he's amazingly lucky at gambling, yet amazingly unlucky at everything else. Actually, it's probably less unlucky and more him always being out of it. Hey, I heard that, you. I'll take you on anytime you want. That's enough, you two. If you want to fight, then you can take it outside. Last thing we need is this place ending up any more run down than it already is. Oh, and on that note, you're fixing that broken floorboard yourself, Jack. That's on you. Huh. Why do I have to fix it? <sighs> fine, fine. Ugh, this sucks. Heh, <laughs> never, ne never thought I'd see Jack get so wrapped up around someone's finger. You're telling me. Anyway, sorry for the wait. Here's Jack. So, I was right then. This is the guy who wants to take me on? Sure is. Really? He doesn't look like he's gonna put up much of a fight to me. Never let your guard down or you could find yourself stumbling into something unexpected. Like, you know, the floorboard again. Bah. Anyways, I'm Jack. I think you already know that, though. And before we do any gambling, I need a drink. Get me a whiskey, Hallie. On the rocks. <sighs> what was that you said earlier about a hangover again? Oh, I got rid of that just now. Come on, we haven't gotten all day. <sighs> you are unbelievable. Hmm, did Hallie catch your eye? Her is about as sexy as a lamppost right now, but she's got potential. Couldn't tell you what made her want to work, uh, work in a shithole like this, but here she is. Anyways, forget her for now. Let's talk about you, yeah? You're one brave guy to come in here all on your own and out of the blue. I doubt many guys would have the guts to do that. Or girls, for that matter. Nice to see you two, nice to see you two are hitting it off. Here's your drink, Jack. Thanks. Huh? Hanging around? I figured you'd get back to work. As if I, I could, as if I could work knowing there's an exciting match going on over here. The owner's giving me the okay too, so I'm gonna park my butt right here until you're done. <sighs> with an owner like that, it's no wonder this place is the way it is. Oh, whatever. Let's get this over with. Here we go. You're the challenger, so I'm gonna be the one picking the. I'm gonna be the one picking the game we play. Oh, we're not gonna be playing blackjack. And I'm going with the. I'm the. The one I'm the best at poker. That's what I. Saw. I don't, I never understood this game. Ah. You'll play a one-on-one -on -one game of poker against Jack using three unconventional rules. In this game, there are three table cards in the center of the table that players include in their hands. Both players are given three cards at the start of their turn, then they eventually choose five of the three cards in their hand and the three on the table to make a hand. Both players attempt to steal the other player's stars, and the first player to reach seven stars wins. The player starts with three, while Jack has four, and losing all of your stars will result in a defeat. Okay, so you can change which exchanges all the cards which haven't been placed in a hold status. Yeah, I know about that. You can put all hold. Yeah, I, ne I know. You, you hold all your cards. You can raise the bet by two stars, but not one on the next game. 
Um, you can fold and exchange all the cards in the hand. Okay. I gotcha. Selecting a card will allow you to choose whether you want to hold it or not. I was never good at this game. Gosh. Um, no pair hand doesn't fit any of the one below. One pair, two cards, same number. Two, uh, two hand has a group of one pair cards. Three of a kind. Two, three cards have the same number straight as uh, five cards with sequential numbers. A flush, five cards from the same suit. Full house, meet three of a kind in one pair condition. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just get this. Let's just start this. Ah, let's get this over with. May the best man win. I am not good at this game. These mini games, like these, this is gonna be probably the hardest part of the entire game. But hey, sure, we'll we'll try to finish it so we can try to 100% the game. Um. I'm gonna hold them all. And, uh... Oh, that's how you change, okay. Okay. We can see his cards right there, the K1, the King 1-7. Choose which cards to, s to use. Gosh, I'm so bad at this. How do I confirm it? Oh, no, 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 no. How do you confirm it? Uh, I'm confused. Okay, sure. I got a one pair, I win. If we can just get past this minigame, we can be free. We can be free. Um, hold these two. Can get rid of that one. Ugh. Did you get the card you wanted? No, I did not. I don't get what these three cards are. Are these the three that we're that we're gonna get or something? Uh. This is gonna go, this is gonna take a while if this is how it's gonna be us stealing back and forth. I'm slowly understanding how this works. Somewhat, not really, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, I cannot wait for this game over. Oh, uh, those two, <laughs> pretty much. There you go, that's two pairs. Alright, I'm gonna try to go a little bit quicker so we're not here all day.
the bet baby that way we could just speed this up no I had the two sixes it's a draw it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay can I raise it still is it still raised Let's go, baby. Jesus. Oh, well, I'm one away from losing. I get to see his cards, he gets to see my, uh, my, what uh, the three, I mean. Three of a kind. I should have raised. I really should have raised. I really should have. It's a draw anyways. I mean, he's starting out kind of strong. Back to we have the upper hand. I'm gonna there you go. Oh my gosh. And just like that, I'm in risk of losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I didn't raise it. Whoops. All right, we got our we already got a pair. I, poker's so uninteresting to me. Like, I truly just don't want to do this. Oh, 
There we go. Like, why am I forgetting to raise it? Get out of here! This is so uninteresting. Why do you have to play like poker? Like really, blackjack is so easy to understand. You just had to end it there. And then you like, just make us play blackjack with the both of us. Like, both of them, I mean. It would have been over by now. But instead, we got to play a game that no one knows how to play. Whatever, whatever, sure, sure, sure. So dumb, like, can we stop playing poker in my, in my, in my games? Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, man. I really, I don't know what to tell you. I... fun are you guys enjoying poker you guys like what that's interesting to you guys gosh it is not interesting already bad and it didn't fix at all but sure because I don't care I'm gonna raise it Speed the game up, please. Oh god, this is so uninteresting. I never understood how to play this, I don't know what's going on, like, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't want to learn. I just want to hurry up. Gosh, I don't like draws. I feel like I just wasted time.
game one more game one more I didn't get a an easy easy win A draw, it's fine, it's fine. We didn't lose a point. Give me an easy equal. No, 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 no. Hold it. This is such a bad game. Oh, I'm I'm about to just hit the give up button and move on. Truly. Truly, truly, truly. I really don't like like I don't like this I don't like card games like this. Poker in my in games that I play. I don't like this. Same thing that I really hate fishing in, in, in JRPGs. I hate this stuff. This is, I don't, I don't understand where the excitement or entertainment comes out of this. We gotta win one more. Give me an easy pair. That's not an easy pair. Ugh. Are you kidding me right now? Holy crap, this is so... Uh, come on. Thank you for the easy, easy pair. Away. 
Oh, great. I'm not even gonna raise, because I know it's gonna happen. I'm gonna lose. As I get the pair, wow. Yeah, you see, I was gonna lose, like, uh. about like I don't I don't get this stuff you get pairs but like this poker is like so confusing compared to the rest especially well I already know I'm gonna I lost that one no need to raise confusing <laughs> no lowering the difficulty none of this no 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 this is garbage. I'm sorry, but this is the worst part of the entire trail series. Right there, that door, playing poker, no, never again. We're not, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force myself to play something I'm not gonna, en I'm not enjoying myself. Uh, if I don't enjoy it, I'm not gonna do it. I'm moving on. So oh, here's where we gotta go. Let me, I, I don't even know if I save, but I'll save again. Here's a new area. All right, um. She was the, yeah, she was physical. She hits pretty hard. You're weak to dark matter, that's right. What is Estelle useful mower more with? Is it magic? Yeah, because they have a weakness, so magic. Or arts, I mean, I'm sorry. Dang, 6.3? Wow. Celestial Bomb, we are both empty. After that poker game, I feel empty. Alright, watch out for the Petrify. Just throw a little ma uh, Arts, because Arts is actually what hurts these things. Physicals do don't really hurt them. Ah, uh, another door. Bring to me the playful minstrel and his closest ally against the beast they seek to overcome. Only then shall the true door open. That's a star door. That is star door number eight. I missed the door. I'm not. I'm not going back. I'm sorry. 
need Olivia and Mueller. Ah, uh, these star doors. I mean, these doors in general, I mean to say. Alrighty. Like me personally, I uh, I don't ever mind. Ever, I won't ever ever mind or or dislike, you know, side stuff like this, you know, cutscenes and stuff. But I think the way they went about it in this game, you know, if it's gonna be lore, talking about the past and stuff like that, that's all fine. Like I will always, I will definitely be down to watch all of them. But the way they did it in this game, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, it's not the worst thing ever, definitely not, but I don't think that they're properly made. I think they just made them way too long. Star Doors are supposed to be short side stories, that's what they are called, that's literally the description of, of the, the Star Doors when you first, uh, get told about the Star Doors. And the Star Doors usually take 30 to 40 minutes to accomplish, and sometimes even longer. We had one that was with, uh, Chloe and Joshua really early on. And that took me like an hour and 20 minutes. And then the moon doors are always a, an hour and a half and above. Like, that's just too much at that point. You don't need to go so far into uh, a cutscene. I should grant you a memory fragment of my blessing. I, you know, just, just a moon door, just make it like 30 minutes. That's all you need. A side story door like these star doors, 15, 10 minutes, something quick. You could lower the, you could lower the, uh, um, you know, what you get, the, the rewards, that's fine. But, it's just really hard to, uh, continuously be in a, a side story for like an, almost two hours sometimes. So, that's just what I'm trying to bring across anyways. One month after the collapse of the Liber Arc. So, here we go. So, just so you guys know, we are 49 minutes into the stream. 49 minutes, which means watch when we finish this. Watch when, watch, let's see how long this takes. The banquet to celebrate the crisis successful rev resolution was over, with Estelle and her friends uh, have, having largely left the capital to go elsewhere. One of them, however, Princess, uh, Prince Oliver, oh, not Princess, Prince Oliver Ray's Arner sat rather comfortably in the ba ambassador's office in Grand Cell's Erebonian embassy. His work in the country not quite settled. I, I can't believe that you... I mean, my deepest apologies for not noticing that you were His Highness Prince Oliver sooner. Oh, I'm not surprised you never realized. I may be a prince, but my mother was a commoner. What point is there bothering to remembering my face? It's not as though I often showed myself in the palace or attended high social gatherings. Knowing me certainly isn't going to help you in moving up in the ranks either as well, my friend. Ha <laughs> ha! Hmm, there's no need to be so humble, your highness. Besides, I'm actually rather grateful to you, Ambassador. You gave me all kinds of useful advice during the, my stay here at the Embassy that I'm sure will be, benefit to my, uh, be to my benefit in the future. Well meant words such as, Act like a man for the Empire for once in your life, and stop idling here. Go home and try doing some damn work. I... I... Your highness, I was only... I mean, I... Your highness, I think you've tormented her for one day. The ambassador behaved in the same way any other sane man would in his position. If anything, I'd say he was ha he has every right to be angry at us for keeping the truth from him for so long. But, M Mueller! I suppose you're right. I'll spare him any more teasing for now. I actually wasn't joking about being grateful to you, though. You truly have done admirable work over the past month. I have? Acting as a pipeline with the Empire, Checking the, uh, checking the safety of Erebonians residing in Libero, helping the international liner service to, res to resume, and those are only the tip of the iceberg. You've done so much more. You may have my deepest thanks as a prince of the Empire. I, I am not worthy of such praise, your highness. You, however, deserve the utmost for braving the danger you did flying up to the Libero Ark. All of what happened seems to have caused quite the commotion in our homeland, so the people seem to be rather relieved now that they know that the danger has passed. It's all thanks to your courage that they are able to rest easy. But there's no point in flattering me, Ambassador. 
I just did what I could, nothing more, nothing less. And I couldn't have done anything alone. All I was able to accomplish was thanks to the help of those around me. I'm fairly removed from the stereotype of Erebonians as stern, strong, and self-sufficient, if I do say so myself. <laughs> as good as they may be to agree, perhaps you're correct. And yet I believe your willingness to be flexible most definitely helped rather than hindered you here. I believe people like you are exactly what the Empire is going to need in the future. Regardless of how, I'm, how I may feel about His Excellency, the, challenge, the Chancellor is approaching. The Im Ambassador. Well, this is a surprise. I was under the impression that you supported the Chancellor. And again, you are a noble. Does that lead you to oppose his reformist policies, perhaps? I may be a noble on paper, but I'm only a baron. All in all, I generally fall in favor of his reformist policies. Be that as it may, while this may have... While this may be just a result of being a liberal for so long and be influenced by the ways of its people, I do sometimes find myself being frightened by his hardline approach. I can't help but wonder what direction he's trying to take our old, take our old nation. Interesting. Your Highness? Oh, I was just thinking that I'm quite glad to have taken the chance to engage in such fruitful talk with you just before departing the country. I pray you will continue doing all you can to ensure the peace of Libra and its surrounding nations while I'm gone. Preferably in cooperation with Ambassador Cotrain. Hmm, yes, let's not forget her, I suppose. Still, it's true that since the non-aggression pact was signed, there have been some progress with regards to the crossbow problem. And given that it was a and given that it was Libra who proposed that pact, it makes my role in future negotiations very important indeed. I presume that is what you're trying to say? Heh, <laughs> you're a sharp one, my good man. Excellent. Now I can return to the capital with my mind at ease. Leave everything here to me, your highness. I will be looking forward to hearing what you achieve back in our homeland. One second, I'm cleaning my glasses. Alrighty. This truly is a country like no other. I never thought the day would come when I would hear things like that from a noble of the Empire. Indeed, he's apparently somewhat less of an obstinate man than I thought he was. Perhaps this nation's very air has the power to genuinely change people. It seems to have had an effect on you too. I feel like I'm seeing a lot more smiles from you these days than I used to. Heh, <laughs> I'm loath to admit it, but that may be well true. I still find myself wishing that you would learn from Liberlian's dignity and sense of restraint though. Two, qual two qualities you don't particularly possess in any measure. In fact, you have far too much of their opposites. You say that, but these qualities are the only weapons that I have. I don't have that much. I don't have much that will allow me to compete against the Chancellor. I need to use what little happens to be tucked away in, in my corner as best as I can. Have there been any changes to your plans? None. We should be able to proceed as an arranged. Three days ago, the Chancellor left the capital on a tour of Eastern Erebonia. Tomorrow, you will be returning there aboard the Arsail while he's still out in East. All those who need to be made aware of our returns have been given a proper notice. Your arrival in Erebonia will make a real impact, of that I'm certain. What potential obstructions to the plan are there at present? Nothing major. There have been some movements in the Intelligence, the intelligence Division's 4th sub Subdivision, but not much. There's a chance that everyone is being cautious because the Arsail is involved, but I'd put greater odds on... The idea that everyone is just treating this as a pompous performance by you and not taking it seriously. Well, they'd be right to it is. I've got no choice but to stay here, even if that means I have to use Libero. And if I'm going to put on a show, when I put on the finest ones the skies has ever seen. I suppose I can't argue with that. I'm sorry to trouble you at this late hour, your highness. A message, that a message has arrived for you from him. Heimdaller? What would you have me do? Really? Alright, come in. Pardon me. Oh, it's this guy, Lecter. Well, if it isn't Lecter, so that's who, what his identity was. I was wondering where you'd been. I haven't seen you all day. I've been ex exceptionally busy with work since this morning, I'm afraid. I'd hope to be able to come and see you earlier since you would be leaving tomorrow. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, oh, never mind that. If that work of yours is done now, we three could en always enjoy some sensual quality time together for the remainder of the night. So what was the message from the Capital Secretary? They've acknowledged receipt of His Highness' message. However, they, did they didn't anticipate that you may be able to arrive all the way from Grand Cell in less than half a day. As such, they're currently in a minor panic trying to ensure tomorrow, uh, tr trying to ensure everything's ready for the ceremony tomorrow. That doesn't come as a surprise. There's nothing like the Arsail when it comes to speed at home. 
<laughs> How cool of you both, uh, both are, for so deftly ignoring my proposal. Although it sounds as though the stage will be set in time. I need to decide on an outfit that will leave everyone's jaws on the floor to sweeten my arrival. Perhaps a glistening coat and white loincloth will do the trick? Haha, <laughs> that'd make gra a grand impact, alright? I must wish I could go along and see it myself. Please don't encourage him. Heh, <laughs> you show remarkable promise for someone so young. What do you say to coming back on the art sale with me? I'd welcome your company. Your work here in Libro is just about done as it is, isn't it? Your offer is certainly tempting, but I'm afraid I have another job to take care of soon. Thought of is appreciated, of course. Really? Well, that is a shame. Good luck with that next job of yours. Thank you. Well, if, you, if you'll excuse me. So that is the second tip. That is the second secretary, Lecter Arundal. Is, is it safe to assume he's one of the chancellors? Most definitely, yes. He came through the Hawking Gate on foot and took up his new position at the embassy a month ago. And right around the same time, we headed to the Liber Ark around the, aboard the Arsail at that. There's no way, there's no way that could possibly be, possibly be coincidence. I'm struggling to read in this cutscene. No, it couldn't. The most likely possibility seems to be that he's part of the intelligence division. Are you sure not the are you sure not doing anything regarding him all this time was a good idea? Oh, absolutely. We needed some way to find out what the Chancellor was up to, after all. We'll probably get some kind of reaction from the Chancellor through his reports at some point. Perhaps in about two weeks when the Chancellor's tour has finished? You'd planned that far ahead all along, had you? Well, in that case, I'll be sure that we're ready. I'll be counting on you, love. Oh, something in the matter? No, not really. It's just that the moon has come out. And what a beautiful full moon it is. It's strange to think that this will be the last time we'll see the moon from here. Truth be told, I'm going to miss it. Well, well. It looks like putting a smile on your face a little more often isn't the only thing Libro's done for you. It opened up your eyes to life's natural beauty as well. But in all seriousness, we'll just have to do all we can to be able to come back and see it again one day. Or oh, we're both still alive. Heh. <laughs> Indeed. The next morning. Your Majesty, Your Highness, I humbly thank you both for your generous hospitality during my stay in your fine kingdom. But you were even gracious enough to humor my brazen request of escorting me back to Hem... 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 Dollar. What's up? Your name. Aboard the Arsail. This debt I owe you will be repaid many times over in the future. Rest assured of that. Haha. <laughs> oh, you needn't think of this as anything we went out of our way for. Escorting an honored state guest back home is a matter, of course. Uh, particularly a guest to whom we owe a great depth of gratitude. If you ever have the opportunity to please do come back to Liberal again in the future, I imagine Estelle and Josh will be will be back by then too. We'll be able to give you a nice warm welcome. Haha, <laughs> I'm already excited for my next visit. Have they left the country yet, by the way? They're busy getting ready to leave in... The, they're busy getting ready to leave over in Roland at the moment, I believe. I'm planning to see them off when the time comes. Okay. That's it. This is before that. I see. Incidentally, while the ruins of Hamel are currently sealed off, I'll do what I can on my end to ensure that they are allowed inside. Could I trouble you to pass that along to them? Certainly. Thank you very much, Your Highness. Oh, think nothing of it. It's the least I could do for all af after all that they've done for, for me. I owe you a great deal too, Cassius. Now for your assistance, stopping that armored division from crossing into Libra wouldn't have been as simple as it was. Haha, <laughs> I could do I could say the same to you. Though, as I'm sure you're aware, that outcome will have been well within the realm of possibility for the Chancellor. I doubt he was even surprised by the incident. Really? Most likely not. Urboni had nothing at all to gain from using that situation to occupy Libro. Certainly not to the extent that it would be worth going out of their way to develop inefficient steam tanks. The only reason I can see for him doing what he did was, a sh was as a show of pay a, a show of power to the surrounding nation. A statement that even without Orbo, Orbo power, Erebonia's army could still act. I indeed suspect that was his true aim all along. Goodness. You did notice. The Orbo shutdown phenomenon was a complete unknown to the rest of the continent. 
Perhaps it might never occur again, but there's always a chance it might. Whether it's here or somewhere else entirely. I hear the Empire has only built up a relatively small number of those tanks in all too. Certainly not enough to launch a full-scale invasion. By the sounds of it, they were just put together in Rainford factories using parts intended for standard orbital tanks. But as it sounds, the know-how to put together the know-how to put together tanks like that only exists in the Empire. And in these unpredictable times, no other nation has the time for resources to try and develop extremely inefficient steam-powered weaponry. In a sense, because of what just happened, the, Empire, the Imperial Army's effect as a deterrent is even greater than ever. He's using war as a diplomatic tool, and a very effectively at that. I really gotta get better at reading. My, my speech impediment is really kicking hard right now. None of this had... None of this had even occurred to me. I have had a long way to go before I'm fit to be the ruler of this country. Don't beat yourself up too much about it. He's no ordinary foe to even, even the most hardened veterans. The Chancellor always seems to be thinking several steps ahead of the rest of the world. It's impressive, no matter what he may think of it. No matter what we may think of his actual ideas. Eh, I'm quite the reckless fool to be trying to challenge him if I do say so myself. Don't be silly, your highness. How you can say that with a smile on your face is utterly beyond me. You should focus on building yourself a strong foothold to begin with. I do hope you'll be careful. No matter what may occur, be sure not to lose sight of exactly where you stand. Of course, your majesty. If I were to go and bring shame upon myself now, I'd be wasting all the effort involved in escorting me back home. I'll be sure to take what you have said to heart. E excuse me, your majesty. Hilda, whatever's the matter? It's not often I see you so flustered. My apologies, your majesty. It's just that a guest for you arrived all of a sudden at the castle. Ordinarily, I would not have rushed in while you were meeting with others, but the visitor is so irregular that I thought you should know at once. Irregular? How? Hmm, it sounds like it's about time I take my leave then. Actually, the visitor said he would like to greet you as well, and not just Her Majesty. What? Hilda, just who is this visitor? Well, he introduced himself as Chancellor Gilly of Osborne of the Erebonian Empire. Ah, it's an honor to be granted a personal audience. I am Gilly of Osborne, representative of the Imperial Government. My apologies for the abrupt invasion. So you're Chancellor Osborne. And it's a pleasure to see you again as well, your highness. It's been a year since we last met, has it not? I hope these past months will have seen you well. Yes, yeah, so a year sounds about right. So, while I hope you'll forgive me for asking, just what did prompt someone of your stature to appear at the castle without warning? I'd very much like to hear your side of the story. My apologies, your majesty, your highness. You see, these past few days I've been touring the Eastern Erebonia on routine inspections. It's been going very smoothly, more so than I had initially anticipated. I had enough free time in my schedule to pay a cordial visit. Oh my, is that so? Actually, I would have preferred to come here with us the while the crisis was still unfolding like you yourself did, your highness. Unfortunately, the confusion in Southern Erebonia was simply too pressing a matter, and I had no choice but to deal with that first. This was the first chance that presented itself to come here and meet directly with Her Majesty, so I acted with utmost expedition. Expediency, I mean? I hope you forgive my lack of proper decorum in failing to give advance notice of my arrival. That does, that does make sense, at least. Regardless, please don't concern yourself with me. No doubt you wish to offer your greetings to Her Majesty. My thanks, your highness. Well then, allow me to ex extend my most heartfelt greetings to the both of you, Queen Alicia and Princess Claudia. It's, up, up, it's abundantly clear that the crisis that unfolded here has been quite the ordeal for yourselves and for your nation's people. You have my deepest sympathies for the hardships you have endured as well as my commendation for bringing the situation under control. I... I thank you for your kind words, Your Excellency. If anything, we should be apologi apologizing to you for the fact that the southern side of your nation was caught up in what should have been our problem. We should be the ones going to you, rather than having you trouble yourself to come all the way in liberal. I beg you to accept our apologies together with my deepest thanks for coming here today. 
I would never ask for your apologies. I've heard what happened it was the work of a shadowy a shadowy organization stirring up in trouble within your borders. Well, I meant well by sending a military force to aid you. I wouldn't have done something so careless had I known the truth of the matter. My actions were rash, foolish, and even I respect, uh, rightfully reprimanded by His Imperial Majesty for them. Oh my. Fortunately, His Highness the Prince was able to act with all due haste to put right my misstep before even greater harm was done. I owe you a great depth of gratitude for that, Your Highness. And congratulations besides for your part in bringing an end to the crisis. Oh, I did nothing out of the ordinary. I had a lot of help from Her Majesty, Her Highness, and Brigadier General Bright here, too. Bright, you say? It's a pleasure to meet you, Your Excellency. I am Cassius Bright, a Brigadier General in the Liberlian Royal Army. Ha! The pleasure is all mine, I assure you. Your name is rather well known, even in the Empire. Not as much as yours is known here in Liberal, I would imagine. It's an honor to be able to speak with you in person. It's certainly a surprise to be able to, though. Coming here on a whim can have been easy for a man such as a bit as busy as yourself. It sounds as though I may have underestimated just how capable you truly are. Not at all. I was greatly impressed to see the Royal Army's effectiveness in dealing with the tumult here. Forces have proven your, um, powerful yet flexible, capable of dealing with emergencies ably and decisively. I might have go I might go so far as to say it embodies an ideal, an ideal that the Empire, the Imperial Army with its swollen ranks, could never hope to realize. You flatter us, Your Excellency. For your part, I hear you were responsible for the establishment of the Imperial. I keep saying Empire for some reason. The Imperial Army's famed Intelligence Division. I just take a drink there. Yeah. <laughs> Our army is in desperate need of a new one for its own kind. I find myself quite envious. Ha! <laughs> it sounds as though the two of us want, uh, want what the other what each other has. Haha, <laughs> so it does. May I ask your excellency what will you be doing now? For my part, I'm intending to leave Libro today, so I'm afraid I won't be around much longer. Yeah, so I've been told. I believe you're intending to make your grand arrival in Himalder aboard the famous Orsail. I'm impressed you're already aware. I almost wish I could return to Erebonia to board it alongside you, but alas, I'm afraid I have other business demanding my attention after I'm done here. I'll be leaving Libro separately this afternoon. That is a shame. I'd very much like to have invited you to this evening's banquet. Please, you need not go to such troubles on my account. I feel as though I've put you enough trouble up. Um, I feel as though I've put you out enough showing up and un unannounced as I did. I say nothing of dining with such esteemed company. Well, I do, well, I do have some time before the airship leaving on its own is due to part. That being the case, might I ask for a little of your time, Your Highness? I have a few things I'd like to discuss with you personally. Heh. <laughs> Very well. I have some matters I would actually like to discuss personally with you as well. What a fruit fortuitous, fortuitous, there you go, coincidence. Allow me to have ro a room arranged for the two of you to have your discussion then. Know that if you would? Certainly, Your Majesty. Ah, it's obvious that Her Majesty is quite the tea fancier if this blend is anything to go by. The fragrance, the temperature, the taste, I'd be hard pressed to find fault with any of it. I've always been more of a coffee man myself, but I have no doubt that I'd be content with a, co a, a cup of this at my desk each morning. As much as I agree with you, I don't believe we're here to talk about beverages. So, shall we get right to the point? What did you want to discuss with me? Haha, <laughs> I see your sojourn in Libro has proven most fruit fruitful. Pardon? When we last spoke you, spoke, you struck to me as a bright, flexible young man. And no doubt you still are, but now I see you in a resilient inner strength girding those aspects. I'm sure His Majesty will be most delighted with your personal development. Heh. <laughs> Meanwhile, I see you as the same fearless man I've always known you to be. More so, even. More so, even. That crushing aura about you seems to have only grown within time. It's as if you need to feed on the resentment of those who live in the, in the territory that you annex. Haha, <laughs> such hard words, your highness. Personally, I prefer the term political unification. Annex can carry such a negative connotation, you know. 
since the end of the Hundred Days War, our army hasn't committed a single act of aggression. All of our, uh, all of our unifications have been entirely peaceful. Oh, you're quite right about that. On the surface. Oh? It's amazing how similar the annexation process is every single time it happens. It starts with a, sim a small nation or independent state with an array of problems beyond repair. Those problems start to worsen, after which Jaegers and other dangerous elements to enter, plunging public order to an all-time low. Despite for this desperate for a solution, the local government requests the help of the, the Imperial Army before they know it, they're part of the Empire. It's not as though I can deny what you're saying. Each instance does share certain commonalities. No, it's to be expected. It's an inevitable consequence of the age of the unchecked growth and progress in which we live. The Imperial Army is simply acting in the Empire's in the Empire's best interest, keeping to stabilize our nations for the good of the Empire. And it's understandable that they would. I do find myself rather curious why the intelligence division members are going to touch nations with such peculiar frequency. But well, before the problems I described worsen, no less. Haha. <laughs> I won't press as to where you came by such information, as curious as I am. But I will say this. At its most basic level, these actions are about risk management. It's because we've been acting to minimize such risk beforehand that the army has been able to successfully quell each problem in turn. With the small price of earring and dis disdain of the people in those nations and an increased risk of terrorism in check. To tell you the truth, Olivia, I to tell you the truth. I'm rather astounded that you had the courage to come here, to liberal, all on your own to begin with. After all, you made yourself the biggest target for terrorists in all of Erebonia. Ha <laughs> Your concern is touching, your highness. I would ask that you not trouble yourself with my safety. I employ some very skilled subordinates tasked primarily with eliminating the risk of a terrorist attack against me. Really, now? Le that lector is one of those, I assume? Ha <laughs> Rather peculiar fellow, isn't he? But a very useful one, all the same. Working out the scheduling for this trip taking, and taking all the necessary precautions to ward off terrorist threats were both his doing. And thanks to, the, to his com commendable efforts, I can depart for Crossbow free from worries as soon as I finish my business here. Crossbow? Are you surprised? I'll be participating in a top secret discussion with a representative of the Crossbow government. Recently, a large amount of funding has been flowing into the country through Republican channels and putting our allies on the defensive. I'd always meant to I have, I'd always meant to visit at some point, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity. Are, are you out of your mind? Crossbow is full of enemies and different factions at each other's throats. I heard it's not even... I hear it's even... Oh my gosh. I hear it's now even a hotbed for terrorists and criminal organizations because of its position as a buffer state. Does that really sound like a place of the Erebonian Chancellor? Should we even be going on an official letter? I'm surprised to hear you advocating caution in the face of potential danger, your highness. After all, it was you who flew onto an ancient city at great risk to, of your own safety and returned unharmed after surveying it. Compared to such, os a, compared to such rousing risk-taking, my visit to Crossbow will be child's play. As I'm sure you're aware, aware... Oh gosh, my speech impediment is kicking hard! Hold on. Hold on. Alright, I'm back. As I'm sure you're aware, you're regarded as something of a hero back in Erebonia now. Ah, to see a hero make a grand return befitting his newly minted legend and aboard the famous Arsil, no less. Naturally, our hero has also taken the time to ensure that every well-known newspaper and magazine are aware of his homecomings, too. Oh, I have no doubt that your triumphant arrival will be every bit as glorious as it has played out in your imaginings, your highness. Ah, do be sure to capitalize on this chance as best as you can build yourself a firm but hold. I expect great things from you after all. It's Sieg. Tree. Hey, hey, buddy. You haven't changed a bit, huh? Scree, scree, scree. Scree, scree, scree. Really? Sounds like a ton to happen. But it's nice to see you and your master doing all right. Lecter? Like we saw last stream, I think it was last stream, or two streams ago, that, uh, I think it was two streams ago, that Lecter and Chloe went to the same school together. Well, well, 
Good day to you, your highness. I pray I'm not causing any trouble by taking a tour of the castle like this. The view from this terrace is certainly, certainly as beautiful, isn't it? What happened to you, Lecter? How did you end up working for the Chancellor Osborne? Hmm? I'm sorry, I haven't the faintest idea of what you mean. Are you perchance mistaking me for someone else? Your name is Lecter Orendel. You were the student council president at Genis Royal Academy, which you attended before leaving suddenly two years ago. So no, I am not mistaking you for someone else. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, because my name is actually Lecterundel. I can see how our names... <laughs> Lecterundel. <laughs> I can certainly see how our names could, be mi could become mixed up. However, they are scarily close. So, now you know. Please just call me Lec. Don't try and joke around with me, Lecter. You have any idea how worried all of us were when you just disappeared without a word? You submitted your notice to leave the academy and then you were never seen again. Even the otherwise calm Leo let out a cry of anger when he found out. And all Lucy could do was give a sad smile and say, This is just like him, the whole time with tears in her eyes. Jill and Hans were heartbroken and so was I. Yet after all that, after all this time, you finally show yourself knowing full well that I'm here and this is how you act? Are you pretending you're someone else? <laughs> Lecter! Sorry, sorry, no need for the scary glare. You're still taking things way too seriously. It's like it'll take more than stepping up as a crown princess to change that part of you. Oh, well, you know, seeing you smile makes me kind of feel relieved. Or seeing you makes me feel kind of relieved. I always figured if someone like you became crown princess, you'd have virtually no freedom to do anything other than work. But from all that's reached my ears, it sounds like you're doing actually all right for yourself. And you even made some great new friends after I left the academy, didn't you? Nice! <laughs> I sure did. Nonetheless, it's all thanks to you that I was able to change it all. You were the one who gave me the first push in the right direction. I never got the chance to thank you properly after you left. But all this time, I've always been grateful to you. Oh, well, consider me honored. Do I get a kiss in return? You do not. I may feel respect towards you, but nothing romantic. Ha! <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Aw, that's a bummer. It was me, all taken in by how pretty you'd become, wondering if this could be the start of something downright magical. What happens instead? My dreams of romance and sweet smooches are crushed to nothing before they can even begin. <laughs> I know you don't even mean a word of that, you know. You're looking very sharp yourself, though. It's surprising to see. Every time I'd seen you before today, it was with that heavily frayed uniform worn in the most sloppily way imaginable. I think you'll find I was merely making a fashion statement. That wasn't laziness or slobbishness. Every part of it was carefully calculated and considered to have maximum effect. The scary thing is, I actually believe you. You always seemed as if you cared for nothing but having fun and causing trouble, yet when it came to down downright to it, you were wise beyond your years. And I finally seen part of the reason beyond that today. Behind that today. I'll ask you again, Lecter. How did you end up working for Chancellor Osborne like this? Just what happened to you between you submitting your notice to leave in the Academy and now? Do you now? Huh, <laughs> I have to admit, I never imagined that would be the case. On the contrary, I was expecting you to tell me to back off. Oh, Adios, forbid. What reason would I have to suggest such a thing? After all, at the end of the day, our positions are functionally the same. I'm not sure I misunderstand. I'm not sure I understand. Do you not think so? Personally, I find it difficult to believe that you would not harbor some hatred toward Erebonia as it is today. The Grand Empire clinging to the glories of a bygone era, ruled by the nobility and shackled by meaningless conventions. Am I wrong? People call me the Blood and Iron Chancellor as though I hold the air the whole of Erebonia in the palm of my hand, but in reality my position is far more tenuous. I have supporters and allies in the capital, certainly, but outside its walls the nobility holds far more sway than any of them. And while it is true I hold a great amount of power in the form of the Imperial Army, even then I only control around 70% of it. The remainder is loyal to the nobility, who also maintains their own private armies. If those factored in my advantages, shrink substantially. So you see I'm still very much in the midst of a battle to truly exert control. Which is why you're building railways all over the country to expand your in area of influence. And you've been annexing new territory to that same end. As I have long thought, you clearly understand me better than anyone else. And that is why I'll say this once again. Work with me, your highness. With your support, our nation will be able to bring about re real reform faster than ever. A noble faction bloated with its centuries of the decadence. And we stop before they even have a chance to unify against us. Surely that's what you desire more than anything. Let me just ask a simple question, Chancellor. What connection do you have with Ouroboros? Hmm? I'm afraid I'm not quite sure what you're asking. 
I will say this, however. I'm a firm believer in using every resource at my disposal in the name of re achieving reform. That's the way I believe in handling politics. I see. Well, it certainly seems as though you, we would see eye to eye in many ways. And that's all the more reason why I'm afraid I must refuse your offer. Is that so? Yes, I find it difficult to like the rotten, noble faction that exists in the Empire. Or perhaps you're right that the hate is the more appropriate word. But my feelings of fear towards your methods are far greater than my feelings of hatred towards the nobles. What you seem to be doing is trying to compel Erebonians with a defensive utopia, whip them into an enthusiastic frenzy. No doubt by successfully convincing the people of the old guard will fall into the metaphorical firestorm created. And yet by then, gears will have already begun turning. There will be no satisfying a, po a ruse populace with a thirst for, for revolution. The storm will just keep growing larger and larger, and more ravenous and engulfing anything and everything in its wake. You notice, don't you, Chancellor? But of course! After all, that's what I intend to happen. It's the first stage of my reforms. I'd be more than happy to share further details with you if you decide to work with me, Your Highness. In the meantime, I wish you well in the strengthening your foothold back in the Empire. Of course, that is, if that is your intention, you'll find it a necessity to work with those nobles that you so despise. Heh, <laughs> you truly do see through everything, don't you? Well, that sounds like the noon bell. The airship should be arriving shortly. Which, which means it's time for me to take my leave, I'm afraid. I look forward to seeing you again in the capital in two weeks' time. I take it the discussion is over then? What's wrong? You look awfully tired. Oh, nothing. I'm just feeling odd at a new monster. Uh, at what a monster I decided to pick a fight with. Oopsie. I think it's about probably. I think it's probably about time for the airship to arrive. I'm gonna have to stop you there and get going. What? See you, see. Next time I see you, I'll bring you some Arabonian salami as a souvenir, okay? Wait! Are you planning to just disappear without telling me a second time? Oh, got an important question for you. Did you fall in love with someone while I was away? Uh-uh. Hit the nail on the head, huh? Ah, uh, that's so cute. First love, right? How's that feel? Hearts all aflutter one minute, end of the world the next. Don't you dare start teasing me. But you're right though, I did. You rejected me on this very spot not that long ago. Wait, you're joking, right? There's a coincidence there's a coincidence I didn't see coming. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Feels like you knew everything, uh you know everything sometimes. Eh, I'm not some kind of all knowing all seeing divinity. That's what makes the world so interesting to me. Oh? I'm happy for you, Chloe. Knowing the pain of lost loves what makes a girl blossom, in my humble opinion. You feel like the whole experience let you get a step closer to the person you want to be? Well, what about you? Do you feel you're getting closer to becoming the person that you want to be? By being at the Chancellor's side? Kinda hard to do that when I don't have a person I want to be to begin with. I'm just sticking with him because it feels like it'll be fun, that's all. I've been doing it since before I joined the Academy, in fact. You have? That prince is proving surprisingly capable, but he still isn't a match for the Chancellor. Tell him to watch his back, alright? So that he doesn't get swallowed up by that monster after he gets tired of dancing. Goodbye, Lecter. Thank you all for waiting. Calabria International Airliner bound for the Principality of Rainferia will be departing momentarily. Please mind your footing when boarding. You look so strong, this Chancellor. Chancellor Osborne. He just looks like he has a lot of power behind him. So, that was the Blood and Iron Chancellor. I can't believe he actually went out of his way to use a civilian airship when he probably has a private one of his own. I'd heard rumors about how ordinary he is, but he lives up to all of them. <laughs> me on my toes, to put it playfully enough. And aside, thanks for coming all this way to see me off, Shara. 
I was lucky I would just happen to be I have business here at the right time. It feels like this is gonna be the last chance we get to see one another for a while after all. Rather unfortunate as my dream is and always was to live away my days in the laps of luxury surrounded by women as beautiful as you. <sighs> well good luck with that. Changing the subject though, who is the young man at the Chancellor's side? He didn't strike me as your ordinary guy. Oh, you could tell? But of course. I'd say I used to, I'm used to running into people who are out of the ordinary at this point. We sure fought enough of them. His name's Lecter Orendel. He's a secretary who wasn't here, sent here by the Imperial government. Apparently he's the one who planned out all the details of the Chancellor's visit to Liberal. Can't pretend to know how much regarding his background, but he's exceptionally skilled at what he does. Actually, I know a little. What? Oh? Is that true? Yes. Claudia explained that the Lecter once attended the same academy as her and had served as its student council president. She also mentioned that about his sudden disappearance after the academy festival, festival two years ago. Unbelievable. And then, someone connected to the Chancellor had visited Liberal first? And he's very likely to have had his own veritable information network established here long before he even came up with the idea. I think it's safe for us to assume that that's the case. Which also means that it's safe to assume that he knows every detail about what's happened here since. From the coup d'etat to the crisis regarding the Oreo, all of it. This man gets more unbelievable by the minute. He actually gave me a message to pass on to you earlier too. Watch your back so you don't get swallowed up by that monster when you get tired of dancing. Sure knows how to straight he know he sure knows how to sting where it hurts, doesn't he? Haha, I feel I can see a whole new world of pleasure opening up before my eyes. He should know he should know better. Getting out done at every turn like this is really not my style. What do you mean? Captain Schwartz, I have a little favor I'd like to ask for you when we're in the air. It's a new theme song, I think. Haha, <laughs> I'm rather impressed with how Prince Oliver has come along. No matter how he chooses to act from here on, he will have his uses to be certain. You would say that given that you think of his, uh, think of everyone as your pawns. There, there is me, the prince, that society. Indeed, I am much the same. We are but pawns on the vast game board that is the Empire, where a thrill like no other will take place. But it's because you too wish to see that, how that game plays out, that you've chosen to stand with me, is it not? Oh well, hey, what can I say? Just don't forget that this place right here might not be the lo it might not be loyal forever. And such a betrayal would be perfectly fine by me. Or did you honestly think I'd never consider the possibility it may, ha it may happen? I just thought I'd come out and say it. How are the other Iron Bloods doing, by the way? They're all doing very well by the sound of it. At the rate that things are going, there's a chance all of the Prince's efforts will be for naught. Perhaps I ought to hold them, uh, uh, hold back on him a little. Ugh, you sure don't pull punches, do you? You know something? I wouldn't write him off so easily if I were in your shoes. What? What? <laughs> These look like rose petals? If you look out the window on the right hand side of the ship, you'll see the famous high speed cruiser, Garcel been informed that it's on its way to the Imperial Capital with Prince Oliver on the Arab on the of the Arabon Empire on board. But he has also given us a message to relate to all of the passengers on board today. I give thanks to Adios for the good fortune to have been able to meet with you today. May your journey be filled with beautiful roses and her blessings. And of course, may your journey to your home be safe and a pleasant one. That marks the end of his message. thought that there was a bigger dumbass in this world than me. <laughs> and yet here we are. <laughs> very, one debo very well debaucherous, Prince. I look forward to seeing what you can do. Show me how long you can hold out against me. And that's the end of the side story? Right? 
It is. Side story, return to the Empire, finished. And we received the Divine Eye with 7,000 Mira. Alright, so guys, we started at 49 minutes. It's 1 hour and 31 minutes. You see how long? You see what I'm talking about? And that is supposedly a short side story. A short side story. Those are the words of the game. The words of the uh, the game itself. Short side story. You ready? So moon doors are like what? They're like double that. They're, it's kind of crazy. Anyways, let's go back. Oh crap. Um, hold on. I got I gotta put uh, Olivia as a support. Alright. And also, now let me go ahead and uh Now that the cutscenes and stuff are done with, I can actually advertise my stream. Hey, we're actually playing playing the game now. Still streaming some trail stirred. Come join me. Alrighty. Okay. Okay, okay. Did I save the game already? I don't think so, but I'll do it again. In case I, maybe I already did. I don't know. Or I didn't. all this stuff that I went I already went through already okay that's over here that's what's down here then teleport let's take it just a feeling it doesn't really lead anywhere if I'm right I was right oh no I had a death blow I could have used that now the enemy gets a death blow, and he resists death blows, if I recall. I mean, he, re he resists delays, if I recall. Wait, was that not a preemptive? There you go. Preem, do No, no, no. Uh, evil eye, so that way I can hit the guys in the back, too. And then I can, uh... uh... I should be putting a cell in the middle. Was this always the battle theme? I feel like it, it was something else. I really don't remember, huh? Dang, really? Hurricane here. That way I could hit the other one, you know? Really killed Joshua. This enemy's annoying. You get lots of XP for the fighting them, though. And you got an amber bra bracelet for the fight. You're the sister here. Does thou shall not steal ring any bells? Well, back to the garden. Let's restore. Um, is the uh. Can we drink the water here? Are we capable of doing so? It looked weird. Oh yes, I can. What is she doing?
Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing important. <laughs> Anyways, there was a star door. We'll just teleport to the star door. That way we're right here. And then we just gotta go up. I didn't I should have done that on when I teleported last time over here. I really don't remember this being the battle theme. I like I like that she got so much uh That's that. um, What is the ornament for it? Cast. Her cast too is so strong that she's actually able to uh um what's the word I'm looking for? Go like twice in one turn. Even if it is a preemptive, she gets to go like immediately right afterwards. See what I mean? She gets to go right after she just threw the spell. That's that. Which usually does like there's like a few turns I gotta go by before she could actually cast the spell. Over here's a red chest and one of these cloning enemies. Beat that enemy. We get the nice crits for both Chloe and Joshua here. Reese levels up and learns chain three. Cool. Uh, Reese, we got a weapon for Reese. Giordorno? Giordorno? Ceremonial sword, 800 range two. 900 range three. Arch attack, 150. Nice, that's really good. 26 out of 36, she sighed in a way that was half frustrated, half disappointed. She never cared about money. Why would he try to win in an argument with it? She could only say quietly in her mind, my husband is an idiot. Alright, next monument that we find will be the one right before the boss. That'll, that'll be a good representation to find when we get there. Uh, to know where, that we're there, I mean. 3,000 mirror in this chest, empty. Someone must have taken that chest phrase that used to be in here. Going around up here now. Oh, We're taking out this enemy. Climbing the stairs up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Dang it! I try to I try to get the preemptive. Joshua does not have an impede. All right. Go and it's over. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah, I want to be. I want to finish chapter five before I fin uh, get off today. I don't have too much time today, unfortunately. Too super busy today, all around. But I want to at least finish chapter five, you know. So 200 of every single step. If five out of 12, certainly. Come on, Hideko. Come on in. Hideko would listen to anything Sato had to say, but no one would know the horrible fate that awaited. Deco this day. All right, we got a, a long loading, a uh, long bridge with the loading screen, and here's the monument. We're just gonna restore our HP and EP here, and we'll just be on our way. We're we'll be fighting uh, the next bosses and stuff right here. Oh. Is that our exit out of this plane? Doesn't look like there's anything standing between us and it, either. Time to make a mad dash for the- WAIT! What's up? I can smell the distinctive scent of the underworld, and it grows stronger by the second. What? And here comes the devil. Are we gonna get surrounded by magic circles then? No, this isn't coming from a circle. It's coming from above!
spiders. Ugh. Ooh. Spiders. Goddess, help us. These are the glut these are the three gluttonous Aragony sisters. Kin of the 77 devils featured in the testament. They weave nightmares and consume the souls of those who wander into a labyrinth. So this is what the real devils are like, huh? They sure look the part, but they're not gonna be enough to stop us. Let's get nasty. Right. I forgot to put a cell in the middle, but it's okay. We got two crits at the end over there, so we're definitely gonna use crits for um, Reese and Joshua. They have the most damage out of everyone. Her side? Oh gosh. I'm scared to know what that does. We're gonna morale. Okay, they're weak to dark matters and stuff like everything else here, pretty much. So we're gonna Phantom Raid. Get a nice crit there. We're gonna do Reese's S-Craft afterwards. We took out the two smaller spiders that are in our way. Heavenly Strike. Best animation in the game, in my opinion. Alright. We already got one of the spiders down. Oh gosh, they summon a bigger spider when taken down. I was wondering why this why this was too easy. Oh, oh no! Game over. Just like that, when everything was going our way, we got a game over. Alright, before I restart. Um, uh, and go back and everything. Let me, um... Let me at least... Um... Uh, let me at least... What, what's the word I'm looking for? At least give it, uh, some, on, uh, some attempts. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I almost forgot to S craft. No crits this time though, sadly. Gosh, she's petrified, that's not good at all. I don't think so. I should hit one. I should hit one. There's a crit coming up. The only thing that the only thing that's bothering me is I don't believe that uh I'm gonna live long enough for Estelle to uh to really use that crit, you know. I think she's gonna get petrified if I run in. I don't want to do this either. I wanted to get the crit. Ugh, I'll morale, sure. Alright, let's see what happens. Alright, good stuff. Oh, this is a single target. Let's hit Arachnus Evros. Nice. Poison's fine. I'll take poison all day. I just don't want to get hit with anything else. <laughs> like petrify. That. 
That is for scary. I'm trying to hold up. I'm trying to get attention here. I am going to use this. Joshua's not in it, sadly, but it's okay. I'll take the defense up and the heal when anything bad happens. Um, and in fact, what I could do here is I'm going to be a little bit off. But I can heal Joshua here, um, and I can give him the 50 CP that he needs to do a Phantom Raid. I'll use it instantly. Now one of the spiders and the small ones out the way. Chloe's taking damage over there. Estelle's movement is terrible now, so let's focus on throwing hearts from a distance. I'm gonna have Chloe do some heals. Dang, it's kinda hard. I'm sure I'll do this. She should, she should be able to reach. Yeah. Heavenly Strike. Hero. Arc Matter on that one. That spider's dead. Now it's just the main one. Movement is still pretty bad. Attack. Uh, we'll attack again. First eye, sure, sure. We'll do a heal over there. To delay, okay. It moved position. It's okay, we have to reach. The crit and the, the petrify, that's not good. We're not doing any anything when we when we attack physically. We should really focus on throwing arts. No, not fast enough. That's the impede, okay. I'll let her physically attack only because she uh she doesn't have any real anything going on with her art much. Three point two K. A three way Oh gosh. I love everyone here. Please. We're good to go. That was dead. Oh, this is bad. Please get the Lucuria off. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. And they're dead. Oh my gosh. We really got all that f all that weight just for that? No, 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 no. Give this another shot. Give this another shot. We're going right in, baby. Let's go. I know, I got a game plan going. First, do what we normally do on these fighters. Uh... 
Will of Time. That does so much damage. Time to have her focus on this. That's so annoying. I don't even know if I saved right outside. That's the, that's the bad part. Not knowing. I had to. Gosh, uh. Gosh, they're so fast. Ah, uh, yeah, GG. GG. GG, GG, GG. GG, GG. Just, just, just take the game over. Take the game over. That is so not fun. But it's okay. We're gonna go over to turn to the title screen. I'm not sure where we left off. It should be pretty close, though. Uh, where are we? Gosh, I don't know where this was. I think this was literally right after the the door. Oh gosh, it is. It is. Right after we did the door. Which means we gotta go through here. I'm not gonna do any of these on the, the, the fighting. We never check what the Ambro bracelet does. Uh, it gives mo prevents movement and speed down. Okay. But anyways, let's actually fix us, fix everyone up. Oh, Lunar, so I'm gonna take it off real fast. Need one for preventing, uh, petrify. Yes, I got, I got five of them. That's good. Good, 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 good. The Mirage Rings, okay. There we go. That should that should be a lot easier to be able to just take on that enemy. On the boss, I mean. I gotta be absolutely insane out of my mind to just not save before the boss like that. I really did that, huh? I, I knew the boss was coming. I called it and everything, and I didn't save. Not like we're far away, so I'm not really bothered, but... I lost the XP that I, I would have gained from these fights that are right here that we're passing through. They're a little bit, but still, it's something, you know? about these stairs. I was I thought we were I thought we were there already. Alright, this is the hallway. This is the hallway. Now we'll save. Should be all set. I'll save right here. So we're just gonna ignore everything that's gonna happen in this dialogue. 
And let's just catch back up. Spiders? Why couldn't we follow the butterfly? Alright, so... Craft the moment uh, she throws her mat, her art. Oh gosh, why did that hurt so much? Sadly, could not awaken Joshua up. But um, Breeze has an amazing, much better revive. And with that arse, that S, I almost said arse craft. <laughs> Some of that S craft can um, actually do. Do. Um. Try again. No, no, no. It's holy blessing. Gotta watch out. We really gotta watch out. That was okay, but we gotta heal them too. Get these little guys out of the way. Arc Matter crit, nice. Just because it's capable of being taken out, I'll just go all the way over there. With Reed. I forgot we gotta start throwing crafts at this guy. Wow. It's okay though. Time for a phantom raid. Alright. I'm gonna do holy blessing on Estelle. Give her the heal and the S craft right away. Will of Time should do a lot of damage. To I mean, it normally does a lot of damage, but. 4.7, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, she might die, so I'm gonna prevent that now. Do, 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 do. 
There we go, we did it. I thought there was another form. We got uh, about 2,000 XP. That's a lot. Chloe, uh, everyone levels up actually. Relearn chain three. Oh yeah, we forgot we gotta relearn that. <sighs> what was up with that last one? That was so unfair. I agree. I agree. The petrify. That must have been Sigma, the three of the three sisters' mother, and even she was not able to stop us, thankfully. Hey, look at that. That's a d another kind of ceiling stone. Maybe that's the uh, the keeper of the of this whole place. I, I forgot what her name was. I think. I think we found the name for her. I forgot. What? That looks like, you know, the, what I'm talking about is the, uh, the woman that talks to us about, um, with the crystal. Found the ceiling stone. Another ceiling stone, huh? I honestly figured Renee's was gonna be the last. I think this one may actually be different. The other stones had a strange sense of warmth when you held them. Not so for this one. Really? Is it because it has something bad in it? No, instead of the usual warmth, it seems to have a cool, almost divine feel to it. Almost as if it might contain the goddess herself within. Heh, <laughs> sharp as usual. Oh, who's that? You decided to show your face again, did you? Ha, the priest is still unconscious, I see. What a shame. I was rather surprised to find out that you can only use a stigma's powers against heretics. Even power of that magnitude is meaningless if it's so limited and has such repercussions. I almost pity him. Tell you the truth, I wasn't expecting you to reach a point to this, uh, reach this point so quickly. Your final piece is obviously... I, I couldn't read it in time. You mean Renee? Thanks to her, I ended up having to make my appearance sooner than I was expecting. I should have assumed no less from the host of Grand Cell's finest tea party. How do you know about that? Regardless, I came to fulfill a duty and fulfill it I shall. Think of that stone as a gift for gathering all the pieces scattered throughout Phantasma. It contains not an additional piece, but a rule book of sorts that you may find beneficial. A rule book? That certainly explains why it feels different compared to the others. Does this mean that you're finally ready to face us head on rather than continuously taunting us? What is that time comes is entirely up to you. But now all I will say is this. On the next game board, all of you will find yourselves face to face with a number of trials to overcome. He's escaping again. Wait a damn minute. Is that all you've got to say? What kind of trials? Eh. <laughs> A variety in all shapes and sizes. Even I will be one of them. You? I eagerly anticipate seeing whether you are able to overcome them and make it all the way to me. Don't disappoint me now. I'm guessing the next area in chapter six is gonna be uh he's gonna be the boss instead of a devil, maybe? Oh. It's almost as if he can't help but try to taunt us. He just stays long enough to say something cryptic and then leaves before elaborating uh before elaborating every single time. Oh, I just love those types. Is something wrong, Estelle? Oh, it's nothing. Anyways, we might have gotten we might have got nothing but cryptic teasers out of him, but we do have a new ceiling stone to unlock. I think we should head back to the garden and get to it. I agree. I'm quite curious as to just what this rule book is as well. The way it glows is pretty different compared to all the other ceiling stones. You're right. I wonder who's gonna reappear. I wonder who's gonna appear out of it. Chloe, is something wrong? No, it's just the light radiating from it feels somehow nostalgic. Huh? That comes as no surprise. It's her. What? She looks like. Isn't she, uh, wasn't she the, the girl that was on the, the deck of cards on poker, the, uh, and the blackjack, the K and the Q? Maybe? I'm so glad I can finally communicate with you like this. Heh, <laughs> I wonder how many hundreds of years it's been since I was last able to hold a true conversation. Your Highness, wait! You aren't, are you? Is that Ali uh, uh, Queen Alicia, but younger? Oh no. It's a pleasure to have the chance to meet one of my own descendants. Okay, an ancestor. And allow me to extend the hand of welcome to all of you visitors to my garden. My name is Celeste. Oh, Celeste Diaz-Lis. Yep, yep, Celeste Diaz-Lis. <laughs> and that about wraps up chapter 5. 
Labyrinth of Shadow and, and Light. I'm gonna have to save it here. I really did not have much time today because I unfortunately had to stream rather late. I did want to stream at least today, you know, um, to get something done. I didn't want to, um, um, I didn't want to just go without streaming because I won't be able to stream tomorrow. So I want to be able to do it today, and I really hate missing days. I, I feel kind of bad, not for, um, um, not just because um, I don't get to stream for um, to help finish like stream for you guys but also i don't get to um really do too much of my own time because usually when i'm not streaming it usually means i'm just really busy and that kind of sucks you know <laughs> but anyways guys let me stop rambling anyways if you guys really enjoyed this if you guys want to watch you guys want to watch some more you guys can follow me here on twitch you can also subscribe to youtube and you can also just chat with me if you want on tw on twitter see what i'm up to see what i'm playing in the background i'm always just chatting about RPGs and gotchas and stuff like that. Um, and I'm always retweeting news lines of JRPGs and stuff of the sort. So if you really want to get some info on that sort of stuff, that's just kind of your thing to see. And, you know, consider following. Anyways, guys, take care, and I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one, and hope to see you guys there. I'm going to be starting Chapter 6, and things should really start picking up quite heavily, because... We're gonna be getting possibly Kevin, possibly Kevin back in the party. I, I'm just, I'm just guessing. I really don't know. And uh, we're gonna be um, possibly saying, uh, he's possibly gonna be spilling out all of, uh, you know, his secrets, Kevin. So it's gonna be pretty interesting to see. But anyways, let me stop keeping you guys. Anyways, take care. Hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.